After making my first video, I received many requests to make another one, where I talk about how and why I left Islam. And this is what I will attempt to do in this video. Leaving Islam was a complex and gradual process. It did not happen overnight, it happened over years. I like that saying, the best cure for religion is studying the scripture, which is exactly what happened to me. I was born into a conservative Sunni family in Egypt, brought up to be a devout Muslim, but ironically, I think it was my father who inadvertently made me an atheist. Since an early age, he encouraged me to read, and I developed an independent and critical mind. And it was only a matter of time before I got curious about what Islam really is, seeing that it has such a great influence on society and consequently my life. So I started studying the Quran and the Hadith, which is the supposed sayings of Muhammad. While studying the Hadith, there seemed to be many problems with it. First of all, it's uh, more explicitly violent than the Quran. Uh, there seemed to me some, to be some contradictions between the Hadith and the Quran. Um, there were doubts with regard to the authenticity of a lot of uh, the Hadith, which in turn cast doubt on all of it. Uh, there are several verses in the Quran that allude uh, to it being the, um, the only scripture or sufficient as the only scripture. So, first I decided to totally disregard Hadith, leave the Sunni sect of Islam, and become a Quranist, relying solely on the Quran. I started studying the Quran more so thoroughly, but again I was faced with similar findings. There were contradictions between some of the verses of the Quran, but later on I discovered the political reasons behind that. Uh, there is a lot of Orwellian doublethink, love and hate the same people, wage war and make peace simultaneously, and other things of the like. The level of violence in the Quran was simply unacceptable to me. Uh, I was repulsed by the idea of such an angry, vengeful, hateful God, who in his vanity seemed rather too human. So I came to the conclusion that Islam is just incompatible with the values of human rights, or well, the values of a decent human being for that matter. The scripture contains a lot of misogyny, sexism, homophobia, anti-Jewish sentiment, or well, anti-non-Muslim sentiment in general. If you really believed literally in everything contained in the Islamic scripture, well, Enter ISIS. Then I started to study the early history of Islam and the history of Muhammad. If you evaluate Muhammad objectively as a historical figure, not as a sacred religious figure, he was a fucking awful person. He was a megalomaniac, a warlord, a thug, committed genocide, he engaged in pedophilia and sexual slavery. This character is no more worthy of reverence than Hitler is. If, for example, 400, uh, 1400 years from now, one quarter of Earth's population started to worship Hitler, would we have to respect Hitler as well? No, fuck that. Fuck Hitler and fuck Muhammad. It's also not just Muhammad, many of those so-called holy prophets of the Abrahamic religions are, were not jobs uh, and despicable people. Like, for example, Abraham attempting to murder his son because of a dream, Lot offering his daughters for rape, Moses killing the Egyptian. What sort of person would I be if I believed those were the messengers of God? Or if they were, what kind of monstrous god is that? And there are of course the absurdities of the so-called miracles, like Muhammad flying to the heavens on a winged donkey, Noah and his ark, Moses splitting the Red Sea. 
I mean, what kind of nonsense is that? I might as well start believing in werewolves and vampires or ancient Greek gods. And then there is the logical fallacy of God, although omnipotent and could have created human beings in any form. He creates them weak in order to sin. And then, although he's omniscient and he knew that this would happen, still gets angry because of those sins that happens, happened because of the way he created them. And all, uh, although omnibenevolent, he resurrects them to burn in hell for eternity. I mean, this only makes sense if God either is psychotic or just doesn't exist. And I choose to believe in the latter for both my own peace of mind and because there is absolutely no evidence for the existence of such deity psychotic or otherwise. Although I come from the largest Muslim majority country in the Arab world, in my experience most Muslims have not really studied the Quran and the Hadith. Most have read uh, most or all of the Quran, but have not really subjected it to any critical thinking. They were they more recited just like a mantra, really. Some others are in denial. They refuse to see or admit that the God and the Prophet, which they have been brought up to revere and romanticize, are in fact horrible. But there is hope. More and more Muslims are sobering up to the reality of this hateful ideology and are rejecting it. And we shall keep sending this message in order to produce more apostates.